Hello friends, welcome to Wisdom Jobs. Myself Rupesh Jadav. I am a geography tutor here. Okay, today we are going to see the drainage system. Uh, but before going for drainage system, please subscribe our channel Wisdom Jobs. If you have not subscribed it, please subscribe it. And also, if you have not gone through my previous videos regarding geography, like location of India, then uh, physical India, physiographic division of India, northern Indian plain, peninsular plateau, Himalayan region. Okay, you please go through those videos. Okay. And now today we are going to start the next videos that is about the lecture about the drainage system of India. Okay, so let's start. So the drainage system of India, it is on the basis we it is classified as firstly the Himalayan river system and peninsular river system. Let me tell you something that when you use the word river system, it includes the major river and its tributaries. Okay, various tributaries. So this is what Himalayan river system okay so this is indus this is ganga and this is brahmaputra river system okay now when i say peninsular river system it includes the river which are flowing over the peninsular part okay so this is what peninsular india okay the river below that is peninsular river system so Okay, this is what Narmada, this is Tapi, this is Godavari, this is Krishna, this is Kaveri, here there is Mahanadi, Brahmani and all those, we will say in details. Okay, so try to understand first the classification and that the types of the river system. So here on the basis of origin, it has been divided as Himalayan river system and peninsular river system. So it the name itself says about the origin, some originating from Himalaya and other which are flowing over the peninsular part. Okay, so this is peninsular region, this one. Then what are the differences? Firstly, the Himalayan rivers are perennial river system. So perennial river system means they are getting water uh, throughout the year. Now during rainy season, they get the water through the rains, but during summer, they get water due to melting of ice over the Himalayas. Okay, so due to the melting of ice, they get uh, water from the Himalayan uh, ice snow and uh, which makes them uh, flow throughout the year. While the peninsular river systems are seasonal, they depends on the flow, uh, their flow depends on the season that is only on monsoon feed. Okay, so whenever there is monsoon, they will have water and in the summer, they will get dry or the water level reduces okay then second one is the himalayan river systems are young so when i say that it is a young it means it has the intense erosional activity there they do very much intense uh, erosion okay they are youthful while the peninsular river systems are somewhat matured okay so they have reached to the matured as well as old also so here, the Himalayan river system do intense erosional activity as they are flowing through a very high height of near about 6,100 meter or some average height of Himalaya, the peaks of 8,000 meter, 7,000 meter. So from that height, they are uh, originating and hence they perform intense erosional work while the peninsular uh, rivers, their erosional activity is very minimum or negligible. Okay. Now, they flows over the plain area. As you can see, this is northern Indian plain, which is formed due to the deposition work of these river system. So, they are flowing over the plain area, which is the soil. This is made up of alluvial. The sediments which is deposited already is of alluvial type. Okay, alluvial soil is there. So, they can erode the uh, beneath part easily while the river system which is flowing over the peninsular plateau, they are flowing over the plateau region that is made up of lava. Okay, so their er erosional activity is not at much that level. Okay, as they are flowing over the northern Indian plain or the plain which is made up of by the deposition of sediments, they can make their own path. Okay, they can cut anywhere, they can flow, change their courses, they can shift their courses. Okay. So, they can shift their courses or change their courses and can make their own path. For example, Kosi rivers has been shifted for hundreds of kilometers in last 100 years. Okay, previously it was flowing from this point. Now it has shifted towards 100 of kilometer. Okay, the peninsular river has 
been given the defined path as that is made up of lava and whatever the path it is already defined they have to flow through it okay then again as these rivers are very much young and have con doing intense uh, erosional activity so they form deep gorges okay and here we will find the deep gorges in this part in all even major himalayan river system like indus then uh, jhelum chinab there we you will find the deep gorges okay while and uh, they they do not perform any gorge ha at for some instant for 10 km 20 km uh, gorges are found in godavari river okay but here they are flowing through very long courses. Long courses means for 2000, 2500, 1900 kilometer, that is the long courses and very long courses from this point till this point, from this origin point till delta. Okay, this is said to be the source and this is said to be the mouth, mouth of the river where it is going to meet the sea. Okay, and here it is sources. So it is forming very long courses. While peninsular river have shorter and shallower courses, they are not that much deep, shallow, and they have shorter courses. Okay. Then, major point: none of the Himalayan river is the tributary of peninsular river. No Himalayan river is the tributary of peninsular river. But on other hand, some peninsular rivers are the tributary of Himalayan rivers. For example, here there is Yamuna, okay, and the tributary of Yamuna that is Chambal, Kane, Betwa. So, Chambal, Kane, Betwa, those are peninsular rivers. They are the tributary of Yamuna River, okay, and the river originating here at the zone that is Son river it is also the tributary of Ganga river so these are those peninsular rivers which are the tributary of Himalayan river okay while none of the Himalayan river is the tributary of peninsular river so this was the uh, information on the basis of origin okay now let's go for the second classification that is on the basis of direction of flow in which they are flowing okay now i have classified in the two ways that is east flowing and west flowing so let's see the first one east flowing so east flowing we have ganga okay then godavari krishna kaveri godavari krishna Kaveri. Here it is Ganga. Mahanadi. So, they drains in Bay of Bengal. This is Bay of Bengal. Okay. Then, I have given the example Ganga, Godavari. Okay. This one, please don't get it is somewhat technical error. Okay, Ganga, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. On the other hand, there is the other river system that is west flowing river system. It is Narmada, Tapi. Okay, so Narmada, Tapi. Other than this, we have Indus river system which is flowing okay, westward in India. So, in this, Jhelum, Chinab, Ravi, Bias, and Satlaj. So, they are flowing in westward direction. Also, the river Brahmaputra, it flows westward in India. Okay. So, this is east flowing and west flowing. Other than this, my own study. Okay, sir. You just try to uh, adjust it. Okay. Chambal, Ken, Betwa, the tributary of Yamuna. Chambal, Ken, Betwa. They are north flowing. They are flowing towards northern side. While Sabarmati and Mahi, here in Gujarat, they flows in southern direction. 
okay so but generally in geography they are classified only on the two bases that is east flowing and west flowing okay so this was about the drainage system of india on the basis of origin and on the basis of direction of flow okay so dear friends if you like my videos please give me like comment and share and also subscribe our channel wisdom jobs okay thank you